All right, you animals. It's time to talk about stereo HomePod minis with the Apple TV 4K. This is a video that many of you have requested. I've been reviewing it, I've been testing them, and to be honest, the results have been kind of surprising. Let's kick it off with the thing that's the most important, the thing that I think that you are all most interested in, and that is sound quality. How do the stereo HomePod minis sound when connected to your Apple TV 4K? They actually sound really good. In some ways, I prefer their sound signature to the original HomePods, especially on the high end. They have a really beautiful roll off to the high notes that the HomePods don't actually have. The HomePods can be a little bit shrill, a little bit shrill. But the HomePod minis, they have a nice, luscious, balanced audio. There's nothing that's jumping in your face or poking your eardrums. And in a way, I actually kind of prefer their sound signature. But where they're lacking definitely is in the lower end. The HomePods are just a lot bigger. They have that custom driver. It's huge. They have those seven Apple design tweeters. And they just crank out the bass. Like the first time you hear the bass coming out of the HomePods. It's truly surprising because they don't look like they should be able to pump out as much bass as they do. The HomePod minis, they have a nice low end, although I would call it more of a middle end. Like if you like thick with two C's, it's more like thick with maybe just one C. But they definitely sound good. And the thing that surprised me was they still do a great job filling out the whole array of all the different sounds for all the different TV content that I was watching. I could still hear the blaster fire traveling all around and you hear the graininess and the nuance of footsteps and people's breaths and all of the little Foley effects that are built into all of your content. The HomePod Minis do a really great job of giving you the full spectrum of sound in all of the content that you're watching, but they do lack a little bit on the lower end. Surprisingly though, they actually do a good job at filling up the whole room. I have a very large living room. I mentioned this before, I have tall ceilings and I really wasn't expecting the HomePod Minis to be able to fill the space, especially when you're six feet away and they actually do. Now, if you have a smaller room or you live in an apartment or you're gonna be using these for like your computer viewing or something, they are gonna be perfect for that type of environment. But even if you have a larger living room like I do, they still do a very good job. Honestly, honestly, I was actually really surprised with how good they sounded and that beautiful sound signature is there just like with the HomePods and they put out enough low end for you to get the experience that you're probably looking for. Let me give you an example, a great piece of content to watch if you're looking for like that low rumbling sound to see what your speakers sound like. 10 Cloverfield Lane. The audio design in that movie is like a character of the movie. There's a lot of stuff happening above them throughout the movie and most TV speakers will not deliver that low rumble and the HomePod minis actually do. You can hear what's going on in the bunker above them. Now, the original HomePods, you get that deep gurgle, that deep rumble. It would be much more immersive than the HomePod minis will be on the low end, but you still get that full spectrum sound with the middle end, the really powerful, impactful middle end with the HomePod minis. Here's the other thing about the minis though, and you may not like this, is they only do stereo. They don't support Dolby Atmos in any way. They don't have spatial awareness like the original HomePods do. So you are getting less of an experience because that Dolby Atmos, if you haven't checked out my video that I did reviewing the Atmos on the Apple TV 4K, <laughs> baby, they've got rumble and they send sound signatures all out, all over your living room. There was one scene where I thought the sound was coming from behind me, even though I only have two HomePods sitting in front of my TV. But surprisingly, the HomePod minis do a great job. They create a big, beautiful envelope of audio for you to enjoy. You're not gonna hear things coming from behind you, but you are, and this is the important part, you are gonna hear all of the different sound effects, the crackle effects, all the sound design that is present in your audio, you're gonna hear that stuff and it's gonna make your content come alive in a way that you probably haven't experienced before unless you have a decent or good soundbar. The other thing that I wanted to touch on, and this was kind of a bummer, I didn't realize this when I first started testing the HomePod minis, is they will not connect to your Apple TV 4K by default. So that doesn't work with the HomePod minis. You have to select them every single time you want to connect them. It's kind of a hassle. This is the way it used to work on the HomePods. It's not the end of the world. You can still do it. It only takes like two seconds. So it's not a huge deal, but 
It is nice with the home pods. They're just automatically selected. Anytime you turn on your TV, boom, the audio is being routed to your home pods. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is you're going to have these home pod minis probably in your living room, right in front of your TV. And that means you get to use them for music and they sound beautiful. In fact, in some ways, and I think I mentioned this before, I like the sound signature of the HomePod minis more than the original HomePods. It feels like Apple dialed some stuff out. There was a bit of shrillness, like I mentioned, that is gone. And the high end on the HomePod minis, they just have a really beautiful roll off that the HomePods don't have. And so in some ways, I actually prefer the sound of the HomePod minis. Now you will have to turn them up a lot more because the HomePods are much more powerful. So you'll really have to crank the juice on the HomePod minis if you want it to fill the space. But I never had to turn them up more than like 70 or 80% to really get an impactful level of sound. And the thing that I like about them is even when they're cranked up high, and this is true about the HomePods as well, is you're still getting a beautiful sound signature. They don't get muddy or gross or tinny or shrill. They maintain their sound integrity, if you will, as they go up in volume and they still sound beautiful even when the volume is raised. Here's another small thing, but something I absolutely love about the HomePod minis that the HomePods don't do. They have this beautiful effervescent glow on the top that is on at all times. So they really do look like, like a candle going off. And I also like the color movement whenever you activate them by invoking you know who. They have this really cool color soft animation that goes on on the top. It kind of brings them to life, that little soft white glow. It's just always going off so you know they're ready to listen to you. I actually wish they would add that to the original HomePods. And part of me thinks that the HomePod minis are version one of the next gen home pods they're probably going to be round except much larger they're gonna have the same lighting effects in the top and they're also going to have the ultra wideband chip that is present in the home pod minis oh did i not mention that before which is going to enable you to use them as a hub in your home to find items that have the U1 chip installed on them, which Apple is adding to everything. I actually have a video upcoming about this, so make sure you subscribe if you want to hear more about this. Apple's adding this chip to all their hardware, including the upcoming AirTags, so that you can find devices all throughout your home in like a hyper accurate way, like turn left, go right, you're two feet away, look down and there are your keys. It's going to be that good. So let me answer a question that a lot of you have asked, and that is, should you get two HomePod minis or one HomePod because they're about the same price right now. Two HomePod minis are $200 and the HomePod goes on sale all the time for $200. In fact, right now, Apple's doing a $100 gift card with a HomePod purchase. So you can get it for about $200. This is a tough one. This is a tough one because the HomePod really does sound magnificent and it has a much fuller sound. It sounds beautiful. It has that punch that you're really looking for, that cinematic punch. It makes your music sound amazing. But here's the weird thing about having one HomePod. Even though Apple says that one HomePod is supported via Dolby Atmos and surround sound via virtualization, it sits over or off to the side of your TV. Now I tested this and it's just kind of weird. One HomePod doesn't virtualize surround sound very well at all. You really need two. And so you're, when you're watching TV, the sound is coming off to the side of your TV for the most part. Whereas if you get two HomePod minis, they're sitting on either side of your TV and it sounds like the audio is coming from your TV, which is really what you want. So for TV purposes, even though it's close, unless you're going to get a stereo HomePod set up, if you only have one HomePod, I would say don't do it. Just get the HomePod minis. I think you'll be much happier with the audio experience, even though you're going to be missing out on some of that big double C thick bump at the bottom. You're going to be getting balanced sound from both channels instead of sound coming off over there near your HomePod. Now, one tiny little thing I want to mention before I go here, and that is the HomeKit stuff and the SIRI stuff is actually really useful. I know a lot of people dog on it, including me, because it's not nearly as good as Google or Amazon's assistance, but for turning your lights off and on, for invoking commands that you want, things to happen around your house with HomeKit devices. It's really useful. And also, it integrates tightly with your iPhone. So now there are voice profiles for your HomePod. And you could say, hey, you know who, where's my iPhone? And it will start dinging your iPhone and it works based on voices. So if you and your significant other each have iPhones, you can each invoke it and it will set off your iPhones in different locations so that you can find it. I use this feature all the time. There is some useful smart features built in, especially if you're already in the Apple ecosystem. Did I answer your questions? I hope so. If not, 
Go ahead and leave your questions down below. I'll hop through there every now and again, see what you guys are saying, maybe drop a few answers here and there. Hey, if you want some more HomePod content, I've got just what you need, baby. It's on the way. I've got HomePods versus HomePod minis. I'm going to be doing a video about AirTags technology, Apple's upcoming AirTags. It's going to blow their master plan wide open, and your gourd is going to melt and come squirting out your ears when you see exactly what Apple's going to be doing with this technology. So make sure that you hit that like button. Make sure you tweak that subscribe button if you want to see more content just like this. My name is Aaron Elijah. Gadget Hunter, I got even more content on the way, baby. Here it comes. That's going to be it for me for now, but I'll be back real soon. Maybe to wipe my finger down your face, tickle your chin. We'll see what happens. Please don't call the cops. I'm wrapping it up there, and I'll see you guys.